this is the program that I have been wanting to do for a long time. Hello everybody, I'm Tony Pellegrino and this is part of a Facebook Live Tech Talk we do every Tuesday and Thursday, today being Thursday. I've got Jeff Perkins from our sales staff joining us today. I've got Alex and Jamie behind the camera. Hopefully everybody can hear us fine today. And uh, this is what I wanted this show to be, Jeff. All about putting stuff on, how to do it, you know, the basically the nuts and bolts of this whole thing. Yep. So for months, we've talked about terminology and why you need the parts and blah, 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 blah. Well, now we're doing it. So um, this is, this is great as far as I'm concerned. Today, we are gonna be talking about tube fenders and kind of associated parts. We will be covering everything from CJ, YJ, TJ, LJ, JK, JL, JT, Gladiator, okay? So I don't care who you are watching, if you've got a Jeep, we are gonna talk about what it takes to put fenders and some other things on your Jeep. So pay close attention, you're gonna love it, all right? So first off, um, what I want to talk about is what your options are when it comes to the factory fender, okay? So Jeff came in just a little bit before the show, took off the factory fender um, with a couple notable things, right? Yes. You said this little thing, can you see this in the camera there, Alex? This little dude. So I don't even remember what they call this. It's it's part of the factory fender yeah, flare. I think it's and early it's, model it's a little, TJ Sports. Yeah, it, well, the YJs had them, like the Laredo. Yeah. You know, it was one of those dumb things. Um, and I think it really just helped the stuff that kicked yeah. off your tire from spraying up on yep. the door and everything. Um, they're a real pain. They have little tiny screws that often get rusted because the, the stuff's just piling up underneath. They get seized. They get... Stripped just out. Not good. No. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you what Jeff said in just a second. <laughs> so um, this has an aftermarket like step on it. And um, what Jeff was telling me, and I, I, I'm telling you, I wanted to mention this purposely, is if this wasn't there, this would have been a lot easier to get off. Oh, absolutely. He also said, if this was his, he would have just taken a sauce <laughs> and cut this thing off. Well, I would have <laughs> determined to buy a flak jacket right then. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, I can tell you this. I remember when I did this on my Jeep, every single piece of plastic uh, foam on the roll cage, every little thing that I took off, I was able to resell. There's some dude out there that wants the factory original thing. So, so there is something to be said, just like we were talking about this washer mm -hmm. bottle a minute ago, is do you just take this and chuck it? No way, dude. There's some guy that wants one of these bad. So You there, have more patience than there, me. There's, there's, By the there's, time I'm done with it, I'm like, I'm done with yeah, this. Get it. rid of me, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to think about it anymore. <laughs> I appreciate that. I guess I'm more of a penny pincher. Um, okay, how are we doing? We got any questions so far? Anybody notable watching this afternoon? Yeah, Tell me we've got Sam Walker. Sam, Terry excellent. Graham, nice. Terry, Moe, Terry, Terry, excellent. Uh, Bill Witten, Rick Harrington, Anthony Paquette. I figured Anthony was on there. And Mitch Moore. And Nick Goodrider was on. All right, hey, excellent. Hey. Okay, well, thanks everybody for joining us, guys and gals. Um, we're here to talk about what your options are to um, upgrade your fenders. So where I want to start is, uh, hand me that fender there. So if you've got a TJ, YJ, CJ, LJ, we sell, it's a whole new fender, right? This goes on here. And uh, this is, it's, it's a super easy thing. The option being, do you retain the factory inner fender or do you buy our optional inner fender that's aluminum right so hang on to that part and i just want to i want to show them how this goes together you you bolt this on the top you know this this comes in a few pieces to make the shipping less expensive and then uh i don't know what i did with those pieces i had i'm just gonna go oh right here um this is the front part and the hardware kit i just didn't want to break it open but basically this mounts on the front here which attaches it to the front cowl and uh, this, by the way, 
what is this, 199 for the pair yeah. of inner fenders? Is it cheaper if you buy the inner fenders? Like if you buy it, is it like 150 if you buy it with the fender? No, I think it's 199 if you buy it with the fender. Okay, so, oh, and it's 249 if you don't. Yeah. Okay, so guys, this is a totally worth it upgrade. Oh yeah. Because cutting the factory fender is quite the undertaking. You know, you've got to cut along. Can they see this down on the ground if I'm talking about it, or do I need oh, to lift it up? Yeah. Let's, you want to put it back up here? Yeah. But also, this goes back to what you were saying about reselling the factories. Yes. So this is actually worth This is worth money. Yeah. Yes. So if you... If it's in good shape, if it's not smashed up, you know, what, what usually happens is this corner gets mashed if you've taken it off-road. So if yours are still in good shape, you should carefully remove them, and you you can literally sell these for top freaking dollar. For way more than yeah. the cost of that inner fender. And if you have, yeah, actually, I've seen people sell these and be able to get into tube fenders for zero yeah. out of pocket, mm -hmm. right, if they're clean. And if you have a popular color, Right, if you're red, blue, black, like something that's mainstream, mm -hmm. and some dude with the same color Jeep can just bolt them on, that's worth every penny. Yes. So, so keep that in mind. So, if you don't want to buy the two, uh, the sorry, the optional inner fender well, you need to cut along here, and you you actually retain this pinch seam. Mm -hmm. So, what we do is we give you a little template, and I guess I don't know. Oh, I don't think we, we didn't pull out the instructions, no. but basically you cut right around like this and all the way back and that's what stays on so the benefit is if you do it that way you just leave all this stuff bolted on you get your saw out and you just cut this off mm -hmm. okay basically what happens is the whole outer skin falls off and you slip on your new tube fender yeah okay? it's really not that big of a deal but... it's not that big of a deal but the reality is this this is not light no. this inner fender well is Super darn light, light you yeah. know and it won't rust right there's a whole bunch yes. of other options or reasons why you would do that okay so this is exactly the same cj yj tj lj okay mm -hmm. now i know you got we got some guys out there jk jl jt watching going well what about me what about me here we go let's talk about you you're gonna this is this is even easier okay um, we'll just nonchalantly show that finisher plate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is a fender that I just took off the Terramoto. Um, but then you do not have to take your fender off. We're just holding this up as a representative, okay? Because I want to show you how easy this is. All the holes are already there. All those factory holes. All you do is drill them a little bigger, and you put a little rib nut on, and you literally bolt your fender on. Okay, so you take the plastic crap off, and you bolt this on and you are good to go. That's all you have to do. If you want, you can keep the plastic inner fender, you trim it a little bit and you keep it in there, or we sell an aluminum inner fender for that too. Mm -hmm. So you've got a couple of options. This is exactly the same, JK, JL, JT. It's that easy. Okay, and when you put this on, your factory fender is like fat plastic, okay? So you literally gain like two and a half inches of clearance right away and this is this one's our narrow fender so um when you articulate this gives you even more up travel it's what i yep. run on terramoto so um yeah this is what well, we're, we're trying to make this as simple and easy for everybody as possible how about questions alex we've got to have some uh, cedrico borda 2004 yep. lj when you cut the hood for high line does the hood hen tend to open up and spread out or keep its structure no, it does keep its structure. In mm -hmm. fact, let's let's talk about that for a second. We're gonna move this washer bottle just down here. We're gonna drop this hood down. And Alex, I want you to zoom in right here. Um, here's my tape measure. And I think, okay. Folks, I hope you're watching carefully because this is how freaking easy this is. You put your blue tape on here. You literally take your Sharpie and you mark, put a mark right there at three inches. Okay, and then you just, you keep doing this all the way down, all the way down. Oh, now we're like right there. 
Yeah, they get the idea. Okay, so you just do this all the way down, right? You do this from the bottom, okay? I'm, I'm showing you from the bottom, right? Now, with a metal cutting jigsaw blade or with a cutoff wheel, you know, uh, this style cutoff wheel, you just run along here and you trim this off, okay? And um, what, what you want to do is you actually want to take a straight edge like this, Jeff, and draw with your uh, silver sharpie there. There you go. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do is you're going to do that all the way along. You're going to connect all those dots that we were just drawing, mm -hmm. and then that's your straight line you cut with, okay? And uh, if you don't know what a cutoff wheel looks like, it looks like this. Okay, so it's the thin cutoff wheel. You just fire this up and you just carefully run along there, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't get all over paranoid about making it absolutely freaking perfect. You can later take a flap wheel and clean it all up and make it look nice. Now, I'll give you a tip, because this, is, this was your question. Does the thing change? I want you to notice this fender or this hood is shaped this way. It's both this way and this way. Guys, this has a ton of structure to it. By, by you cutting off even this little lip on the bottom, it doesn't make any difference at all. This thing has plenty of strength left. But, but beside the fact um, that there is the rest of the inner structure to it, mm -hmm. okay? So, and you know, you can see this thing already flexes a little yeah. bit. It's, it's not gonna flex anymore, it's the same. So, um, now, I would recommend if you're gonna cut this, you cut it off the Jeep on a couple of uh, stands because when you get to here, I don't want you slicing into the tub. No. Right, with the, with the cutoff wheel. So get this hood off, cut it, and it will be plenty strong. Now, one more tip. Um, I usually take a Q-tip, I don't have one here, but I'll use this as an example. I uh, will spray or dip this in some paint and I will run it along the edge to mm -hmm. keep the edge of the sheet metal from rusting. If you're really nervous about it, I get all these guys that are all, I would just leave it myself, okay? With a little paint. Mm -hmm. um, they wanna put rubber edging on the bottom. You can go to the auto parts store, they sell little stuff that when you hit it with a heat gun, it has glue inside and it sticks on. Yeah, I okay? did that. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah. So, um, you know, cause the, the edge can get a little sharp, um, I've always taken a flap wheel and, and kissed mine, yeah. and that kind of doles it up. So, um, guys, super easy. You did it, right, years ago. <laughs> you yeah. got over it quick. <laughs> Pretty quick. Yeah. So, um, what other questions we got? Uh, what is the weight difference for the aluminum vendors on the JK? Versus steel? Versus what stock? Oh, uh... Maybe one pound. Because the plastic is like super light, but so is the aluminum fender. I mean, it's, but the aluminum fender has a lot more structure and strength to it, a lot more. Uh, I mean, the, the example is I flopped my Jeep over at Sand Hollow and yeah. the, I took the tube fender off. That, that's the thrashed fender, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the body panel and put it on the new body panel and it's good to go. Yep. So. Okay. Uh, you gain clearance, but what about adding structure to the front of the JT? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I don't know if you want to pan the camera around. T Terramoto is sitting right there. And this is, this is the brand new uh, fen factory fender, and we just bolted the Gen Right one right back on. It's, it's that simple. So that's how tough it is. The whole Jeep laid on this. I busted the hood latch, you know, I mean, it was, but that's it, so. All right, hopefully that answers the question. We do, yeah, it, uh, lift that back up. We make, it's on our website, um, and it goes, it goes right back here. So you drill a couple extra holes, and we've got a little fender support kit that goes there. Um, we offer it, people, are all freaked out that they needed. Somebody told them they did. 
I've raced King of the Hammers. I've driven that all over the country. That thing's seen more trails than anything you're ever going to do, and I don't have one of those. You don't need it. I just flopped the Jeep. Like, guys, okay? But, you know, you want to spend your money? Sure, we make it. Go for it. What else we got? Uh, Terry Mode, is it better to put these on before you start reeling hard? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like I told you, you thrash this, and it's worth no money. Mm -mm. Okay? And what happens is you start damaging this stuff, wear these bolt up. And, mm -hmm. by the way, this stuff is not cheap. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> hard to replace, expensive. Yeah. Once you mess it up, now you got to put something else on, whether it's a factory fender or ours. It doesn't it's fit right anymore. Tweaked. So, yeah. Always better to get your Jeep fixed up first. What else we got? You answered one I was going to ask, and we're caught up. We are. Wow. Unbelievable. Okay. Um, so we talked a little bit about standard. We talked a little bit about Highline. Let's flip this back up. If you're going to do our inner fender, um, you would assemble that onto this before you put the whole thing on. Um, you, can, you can stick it in there and then put the fender on and assemble them once they're like that as well. But um, there's plenty of room to get the whole thing on there. Mm -hmm. Now, high fender, different story. High fender not only moves it up, but it moves it back. So this gets modified, right? Battery tray, we've got a whole mm -hmm. kit for that. That, that moves the battery back and tips it. You know, we do some real clever stuff on that side to, to make that happen. Um, the other thing is, if you want high fenders, and I, I have a warning on the website that's like, hey, you know, you gotta want this bad because of all that stuff over there, okay? This side's not too bad, but that side's terrible. Um, that was all because people wanted to reuse their factory inner fenders, and we had to lift those to, to come up with everything. Oh. But if you buy our aftermarket fenders, what they do is they step down so mm -hmm. all that stuff has a place to fit. Okay, so as long as, basically what I'm saying is don't use your factory inner fenders anymore. That a long time, that was the only option. It's, it's not a good option anymore. Just get the, for the 200 bucks, Get the well, gen right it. ones, and it's your life is way easier. Beside the fact they're lighter and they won't rust. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and you can sell this, right? This is by itself is completely saleable. So um, let's see. I'm going to give you a couple of tips. You know, you can see this Jeep's a 2006. Um, there was a lot of rust already, and this, by the way, this thing doesn't even look like it's been off road, right? No, this, this is not at all. like pristine. Um, I would take a tap on my drill and I would run this thing through there. Um, I would just, you know, zip and then back and zip yep. out. Um, I would, when the bolts go in, I would put grease on every single one yep. of these or anti-seize or something, right? You do not put dry bolts in any of these things. Um, that's super important. Um, let's see. And we're going to give you all new hardware with our stuff and it's all the, the nice stuff, you know, so, um, oh, this is part of it too. Okay. So, um, yeah, you're going to get all stainless steel and you know, it's, it's good stuff. So what else we got? Uh, what latches do you recommend for a TJ LJ? Uh, do you like the one with the pin or did you do the like, I do hood, pins. hood pins. Yeah. Uh, but we sell who, I forget who makes them. I think Drake. Yeah, the yeah, they do. Um, so that's, no, nah, I'm running something different. Um, Drake is the one with the little, uh, the little pin ball thing. Pins. Yeah. The ones like Andrew um, runs on his, they work really well. So when you, when you cut your hood, the, where it mounts is like trimmed in half and then you got to move it up. And uh -huh. that's why you went to the pins. Cause it's kind of a funky deal. Yeah. Um, well, before the Drake ones worn out when I didn't, so you and, just had to make these work. Well, and I noticed that we took away, we used to put the holes here to mount the factory. Mm -hmm. We got rid of that. So if you do hit pins, yeah. it's not there. If you need a hole, you just drill a hole. Everybody's got to yeah. drill, especially if you're working on your own Jeep. Yep. So, um, yeah, good question. Uh, Adam Files, will L or JL latches work on an LJ? 
Will JL hood latches work on an LJ? Um, I, I wouldn't. I, I don't like the way those, those are funky. No, I'm gonna say no. All right, is the structure oh, of the no. JK strong enough that you could stand on your fenders? Is, uh, yeah, you can stand on any of our fenders. Yeah. Yeah, you wanna see me do it right now? <laughs> Kinda. Let's do it. <laughs> I'll stand on one side, you stand on the other. <laughs> Heads up, we're coming out. Oh, oh, Part oh. of the show. <laughs> see? There you go. There you go. them fenders. <laughs> All right, next question. Uh, are you guys going to install the fenders live right now? <laughs> well, not right now. Um, but... we're, we're halfway through the show, so we can continue to install the fender. Um, if we have no other questions, I, you know, we got to kill some time doing something. So um, what else we got? Why isn't Tony, Tony wearing his Santa hat? Oh, I guess I could. It's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Here it goes. I mean, it's we're only, what, a week away? All right. A week and a day? Yeah, I can get in the holiday spirit. I mean, Debbie have had this plan for a while. <laughs> Who was asking this question, by the way? Was uh, it Debbie? Brooke Stearns, Sam Walker also. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. There we you go. Look okay? Now you're looking yeah? great. All right. What else we got? See, we're just knocking these questions uh -huh. out. Can we stand on the fenders? We just did it. Can I wear a Santa hat? I was hat? worried that it. was going to turn into something. Can you stand on this? Can you stand on this? <laughs> if you were to leave the fenders raw aluminum, do you recommend a clear coat or just leave as is? Um, everybody who's done a clear coat, it ends up turning kind of milky. Um, and if you want to tune it up, you know, guys on our website, we sell these uh, burgundy scotch bright pads this is genuine 3m scotch bright yeah. like this is the good stuff yep. this will bring your fender back to I've, a beautiful yeah finish. i've never clear coated them i tune them with that about twice a year yeah. and they look like new yeah and that's after going through mud and mud. like they get all stained and shitty oh, yeah. and stuff um the grade of aluminum we use is uh marine grade and uh it won't um oxidize and, and corrode yeah. so you just all it all that happens is, is the shine goes away this nice brush finish yeah. now you know you've been going through bushes and scraping against rocks and all yeah. kinds of stuff right so what i usually do is uh since we're standing right here in the shop is i'll just take a, a fine file i'll file off the the rough like yeah. if I scraped on a rock then you hit it with some of this and you won't even see this anymore and it'll it'll look beautiful yeah. like right back to where you bought it from us That's... by the way the tubes on all of our fenders these um are 3 16 thick so this is this is a real thick wall aluminum uh same on the jk's like anything we do in aluminum whether it's a tire carrier or fender or whatever it's 3 16 or 188 and um, that gives you a lot of room to, you know, carve away on it and, and refresh yeah. it. So, but yeah, you can get that nice brushed aluminum finish right back and it looks great. What else you got? All right, here's a good one. Uh, what about the battery tray and miscellaneous components that you mount to the inner fenders? Um, so that's, that's a completely separate kit from us, right? You want to talk about that? It's in two stages, actually. What was he referring to the high? I'm assuming the high fender, right? I, I think so. If it's the standard, then you don't need to you do leave anything. It. Yeah. You leave it. Yeah. You just put in the aluminum fender, you're good yeah. to go, which is the one we were just showing you as a standard aluminum fender. And then the high fender, you get our mounting bracket, and you take off all the battery mounting stuff from factory. You put ours on it, and it lifts the battery, moves it back, and it angles it a little bit to allow for the, it, this to go further back. And then also on our inner fender, it kind of goes down a little bit, so there's still allowing some room for you to remount all this stuff. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I've seen people do it a lot of different ways. I've just mounted this on the top of my inner fender right here. Yeah, and I've seen people like clamp it to this. I started that way. Yeah. I didn't like the rattle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah it's a, when you hear it's all your electrical, it's a little yeah, sketchy. Yeah, which could could have been. Or maybe I ran with that too long, and that was the source <laughs> of all my electrical issues. Uh, but you do have to get a cone type filter, yes. air filter. Yeah, I mean, just get rid of that stupid thing. Yeah, you know? yeah. And... Um, okay, so when it comes to the battery 
uh, kit, we sell two different ones. We sell one, if you're gonna use your factory metal inner fender, you need to buy the entire kit, yep. the 2500, or you can buy the 2505 if you're doing our aluminum fender and save some money, because you don't need a bunch yeah, of extra and, stuff. Yeah, and honestly, the installation's a lot more straightforward a with that more. system. Yeah, yeah. So both of them, uh, what's important for people to understand is, um, we don't know what year you're putting the kit on. So whether it's a 97 all the way to a 2006, well, by the way, there was completely different equipment under, like this one's a stick, right? So yeah. it's just got a little thing here. Well, if you had an automatic, you'd have cruise control and a bunch of other stuff that I don't think you removed, right? This was pretty clean under here. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so, but, but you get a fully loaded Rubicon, man, there's a ton of crap under here. There is. So we give you all the brackets to remount that stuff. So when you get the kit, if you've got a simple one like this, you're gonna have a lot of extra parts. If you've got a Rubicon, you're gonna use everything in that kit. So yeah, keep in mind. What else you got? Shane Smith. Why do the JCR fenders crack and it generates? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're, they're the ones with the rolled edges, right? They are. So um, that has to do with the manufacturing process. So um, where, where we use a tube, this is one tube. By the way, this is a very expensive tube to bend. Um, this is all done on a CNC mandrel bender to get this perfect tube like this. And um, the other companies are forming this top plate over and then they're welding it in certain junctions and uh, aluminum welds in that case will crack. Um, this, this whole thing moves around, you know, when you're on your Jeep, right? This is mounted independently of this mm -hmm. and they're all on rubber body mounts. So um, we, we spent a long time, this is our third generation on this, by the way. Um, and we, what we did was like everybody else, we first made these out of steel. And they were heavy, like, you know, you could literally park a semi truck on them. Um, and what would happen is the, the fender was strong as hell, but it would, you'd kill this and you'd kill the tub. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what didn't take long before I went, well, that's not a good idea, right? Yeah. Like those are the two most expensive well, things. Because no, once you bend that flange right there at the firewall, it's done. Your hose. Yes. So I quickly realized that what you needed to do was make this durable, like you just saw. We stood on it, but not so tough that it destroys everything yeah. else that it's bolted to. So I think that's the big misunderstanding is that people are like, I want a tough fender, but it's like, yeah. It has to give. <laughs> Something has to give. <laughs> it's gonna be your body. Like, yeah. I still make steel fenders, by the way, so if you want one, call in and talk to Jeff. He'll be happy to sell you one. Uh, yeah. But by still. the way, they're, they're not light like this. Like, one, one hand no. light. Like, I dare you to lift it with one hand. And I'd rather replace a fender than a tub yeah. or a grill. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> For sure. So um, yeah, this whole thing is is built to work together, and uh, that's that's why. Yep. Uh, Mike McDonough, do you have to cut the hood on a CJ? Only if you get the high fender. So if you get the standard, um, no cutting necessary. Standard. So by the way, um, let's actually hold this back up. Um, we make this. This is this would be the equivalent of this fender right here. So we call this a four inch, which is exactly how wide this is. I don't have my tape measure again, but that's, that's, we make this in a zero and we make this in a six inch, so two inches yep. wider. Okay, now, if you can't tell, this tapers with the hood. So where the factory one goes out like this, it sticks, you know, it's sticking way out here, guys. You've, you've given this like a six inch clearance. So that's a huge difference because what did I tell you early in the show? This always gets bashed. Well, we changed that so that doesn't hit anymore, so. All right, we, we, this isn't our first rodeo. We've been doing this for a long time. I've driven through the rocks and trees for a lot of years. And let me tell you, this shape is exactly mm. what you need. <laughs> when you turn yeah. the tire all the way, you know. Oh you yeah, know. I, I bashed mine up before I went with <laughs> your right. fenders. I can sell them. All right, what else you got? We're just um, knocking these questions out. Brian Carafa, 2003 TJ. Seems like Highline fenders would disqualify for 4600 class because cutting the hood even retaining even with retaining stock inner fenders am i understanding the rules correctly or is it possible uh you know fenders? what did what did verosa have these weren't high fenders in stock class it's um tire size and suspension basically so so here's the thing guys um and this is a really important aspect to understand because now, now you're you're starting to mix a whole bunch of things you've heard on the internet okay 
Stock class is only a 35 inch tire. I think that's what we're dealing with right here. Okay, this tire, you couldn't push up into that fender if you tried, okay? So forget high fenders, you don't need that stuff. Standard fenders are plenty high because remember, what did I just tell you? Four look, at how, look at how <laughs> thick this plastic crap is. You just got rid of all that, yeah. okay? So you know, you've gained all that just by getting rid of the plastic. What's okay for the stock class? The, the standard, low fender, standard. The, what we call standard, standard fender, yeah. correct. Yes. The, you know, even a 37, um, yeah, I, I doubt. So think about this. This is, this is going to like put you into a freaking tailspin, I guarantee it. The Growler on 42-inch Goodyear's ran standard fenders because you can only travel so much up, okay? Or that axle is into the frame. Like, you gotta, look, I've cycled everything, I've done all this, you, you can't put one past me. I, I got this down pat, what okay? Tracer well, Tracer Kit's different. So, Tracer Kit um, allows everything to bump much deeper because we use the rollback axles, because we use the shorter radiator, you know, that's, that's a completely different animal, so, um, yeah. Uh, is your Highline hood exactly the same as the old AEV ones? It is. It's, it's actually um, a replica built in fiberglass and carbon fiber. Yes, great question. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, what cone filter do you recommend for an 04 LJ? Uh, are you running a K&N or what are you running? Uh, what am I running? R2C or it AFE? AFE. AFE actually will make you a custom one. You go on their website, you put in all your dimensions, and it'll make you a custom cone one <laughs> to the exact length you want. So depending what you get in there, you figured all that out, you can order a custom one from them. That's what I did yeah. uh, in my old one and in my new engine swap. That's the route I went. Okay. I know, I'm pretty sure we have K&Ns in stock. So, you know, either way. Yeah. I, I, did Andrew run a K&N? Somebody, somebody just put it off the shelf. He uh, just talked about that in his video. I think Andrew did. He did, yeah. So you can call in. He's still sitting there. Andrew's yeah. over there. Call in, talk to him. I know he was working up a list of all the factory or, or you know, parts that he used. So that would be in that list. Uh, VB Tom, 91YJ with the battery tray. Would I lose my Group 74 battery and have to downsize? Uh, with with a high fender or with a standard standard you lose nothing it's it it literally replaces the standard fender okay mm -hmm. if you go high fender there there are concessions and by the way get that damn battery from out underneath the hood put it in the back you know what happens here heat you know what's bad for batteries heat get everything you can out of here okay there's too much weight sitting up here move it get it to put behind the rear seat. And that means if you've got to go to two small Odyssey style batteries to get the same as your giant group battery, do right. it. That's what I did. By the way, you got redundancy too. So something goes sideways, you just turn on the other battery. Done, like we do it in the race car, just like Terramoto. Uh, Adam Harrow, can you use Genesis dual batteries with your battery relocator kit? With, now, now we're talking about JK? Guys, you gotta remember. Either tell well, me the year or tell me the model. I don't think Genesis makes anything for, for TJ. Yeah, so it's so probably it JK. JK. So um, Shane has the Genesis kit in it, his. It doesn't change anything. Though. Doesn't change it. It no. fits perfect. Mm -mm. So said TJ. Oh, I didn't know they even I, had one. For yeah, TJ. Maybe, maybe that's new. I don't know. Um, but uh, maybe talk to Andrew. Andrew's pretty up on that stuff. Just call in and talk to Andrew. Yeah. I don't know if we can answer this yet, no, I'm not, but Mickey, is Mickey Thompson going to make a West Coast style UTV tire with a more all-terrain tread ready, or tread someday, something better for rock trails? You know, um, they're, they're obviously always working on new stuff. We've given them that feedback. And um, I know that in, it's like March, they're introducing some new tire we haven't seen it yet, but um, I would definitely keep my eyes out for that. Whatever it is, those guys are on their A game right now, and I'm, I've been really impressed with what they've been doing. Can you integrate rock lights into the fender? 
Um, well, I, I mean, do it with the inner fender. Yeah, we do it on the inner fender, yeah. right? So um, I think you're running the Vision X ones. Yeah, I'm running the Vision. Yeah, X so ones. am I. I've got I've got the pods. You got the yeah. the other one. I always do on the inner fender because on the actual fender, there's a good chance you're going to see the top bolt somewhere. Yeah, the inner fender, you can hide it really well. Yeah, and if you're if you're talking about like for turn signals, we've got the three quarter that goes here, which I saw. I've got right here. Yep. Man, we just got everything right yeah. here today. So those just pop in. And then we've also got, if you are if you want to be totally DOT legal, the little um, one that tucks underneath. We actually call it the stealth one because it's actually a little bit under. Yeah. So the only way you see it is if you step back. If you're right next to the vehicle, you don't see it. But if you step back, yep. it's there. You gonna yeah. shove that in there? Yes. Show them how easy it is. Just put the little grommet in first. And this is this is standard on every fender. TJ, YJ, CJ, LJ. And we use these same ones on JK, but you drill the factory uh, sheet metal to put it in. Just shove it in. Look at that. Beautiful. There we go. And because this is dome shaped, I don't know if they can see that on the screen, it radiates the light. So even if you're not directly in front of the vehicle, off to the side, you're seeing that. Oh, pretty nice. I'm still rocking the old flat ones. Probably flat ones. Yeah, they, yeah. they updated. So nice. pretty nice. I just put these on Terramoto. So that's why I've got them over here. Gotcha. Uh, LJ, does the LJ uh, Highline always need an aftermarket air intake, or can I relocate the OEM one? Um, you, you might be able to. Um, the uh, amount of time you're going to spend doing that. I know. I don't know. I know. Um, I, I think it would fit because I think our aluminum inner fender comes to that same height on the inside. Um, it just has come this way. A little bit, you know, and you could flex that boot or trim the thing a little bit, the tube. Yeah. So I don't know. It, it you know, if you're, if you really want that, you can find a way to make it work for sure. Yeah. So, how much more rear tire clearance do you get on the front fenders compared to the stock on the CJ7? If you go sideline, or or you're just talking like just go to our tube fenders, it's a ton. So um, a CJ, by the way, is the thickest right here. So when you go to our fender wells, because that's a CJ, like. You, you couldn't even fit a 33 without rubbing all over the place. Well, these, you know, you can stick a 35 under there, no problem. So, um, and you know, Keith's running 40s mm -hmm. with his. Now, granted, he's moved the front axle a little bit forward yeah. and stuff. So, um, but it, it does open it up a lot. Um, I can, uh, I could verify that. I've got some CJ fenders out there. I could take a measurement and then I'll post afterward and give you the exact measurement. So... Someone was asking you if we had a four inch fender to show, but that is the- This is the four inch. Yeah, mm -hmm. the way it works, guys, is the four inch is measured right here, right? So this is the same as stock. Mm -hmm. Like you look at stock, look at that, and that's it. Hopefully they can see that on the screen. Yep. So in fact, if I, if I put it like this, that's same as stock. So yep. that's what we're talking about. And then the benefit to ours is that it tapers. So if you match, this line, right, oh, as close as we can get it, yeah. see how it cuts all that off. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge difference. Yeah, and, and pay attention to TJ's, you see the wheel with stock fenders. See how many dents are right They're just here. smashed. <laughs> yeah. The lights are bashed out. This yep. is all caved in. Yep. Uh, is there a good way to straighten the tube once bent? The, one of these tubes? Um, it, it would depend on how it's bent, but they're tough. So um, if you have the ability, so say it's uh, bent this way, you can actually put a porter power inside and pull it out. You could take a, your buddy's winch and get a two by four stuck inside there and pull mm -hmm. on it. Um, there's a couple of creative things you can do. Just remember that to bend a piece of metal, you have to go past where it needs to be and then it rebounds back. So if you've got a rocker guard in the way, you're gonna have to pull that rocker back in order to pull it far enough to get it right to where you yeah. want it. Which might be easier just to pull the fender off and put it in a press. That's a lot of the time what we end up doing, whether yeah. it's a skid plate or a fender or whatever. It's so much easier. We just put it in a 20 ton press. press and yeah. push it back, so. Uh, Dennis Sargent, uh, what do you recommend for inner fenders on a, for a CJ running your standard four inch fenders and 37? 
So um, we have had some of the CJ guys buy the YJ inner fenders and make them work. Yeah. They uh, had to get a little creative with the mounting up here. A little bit, but none of them really call back and say they ran into problems. Right. They're always they, able they to figure it, it out. Yeah. So we run the YJ Let's face it. If you've got a CJ, you know how to work on stuff. Correct. Yeah. Right. I say that in the nicest way. Mike Stewart, 2015 JK. Are your inner fenders, are they one piece or two piece? Inner fenders are multi-piece, so um, depending for, for on which JK, ones you get. Say, for, for JK. Oh, JK is a one-piece. One piece. Yes, yes. Yep. I'm going to set this one here so I stop knocking it over. And those are really nice. I mean, you can stick that. That's a few-minute installation yeah. Yeah. per side. Not long. Uh, Brian Carafa, 3TJ again. Have you ever seen anybody... Or is it possible to get the standard fenders now and later do later upgrade to the Highline? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I started out in the standard fender. You now did. I'm in the Highline. Yeah. I mean, my first lift, I was on 35s. The Highlines were going to look goofy, and I don't think you had them out yet. So Probably not. Yeah, that came. And then, you know, of course. All right. Sorry about that. Um, if you missed it, Summer Ann, great to have you watching. And those are one piece. I figured you already had those, and maybe you have them, but you haven't installed them yet. But yes, and JL. If you don't, call me. We need to get those on order. Yeah, JL, JT, JK, one piece. Yep. All right. Uh, Someone was surprised to hear we have YJ inner fenders. Oh, yeah. Yeah, YJ, tons of uh, YJ standard stuff. and high. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, all of our uh, TJ and YJ inner fenders have just gotten updated with that mesh panel and the GR in them now. So oh. that's pretty cool. So the next uh, production version, that's the way they're coming. Good. I didn't replace one yet. There you go. <laughs> uh, that's it for fender questions. I can go back to regular questions if you'd like. Sure. Yeah. We got a, we got a few minutes left. We can answer some regular questions. Um, um, guys, we're down to the last, I don't know, seven or eight minutes. So... Fire away those questions, and we'll see if we can get them in here. Is there a GR or Generate Elite type suspension made for the CJ frame? Or Legend. That, that's a great question. Um, what guys do is they take our uh, TJ YJ Legend kit, and uh, it's a C that goes over the, the frame, and uh, you cut one piece off, so it just uh, ends up being an L, and it goes over the frame this way. The frame's just a different height. So it works perfectly on there, and um, you do have to come up with your own belly skid, and um, you know you could take a YJ and try and modify it, but um, yeah, that, that's what everybody does, and that's what Keith has. Yeah. So if you're interested, Keith's still there. Call in and talk he's to him. He's, he's our a CJ. CJ guy, and boy, boy, does he love to talk about that CJ. So call him up. Uh, what backspace do you recommend for 42-inch tires, Curry 70s? Front rear coilovers on a JLU. Okay, so the axles have to be 70 inches wide, and then you're going to be uh, four and a half inch backspace. So if you want a little extra clearance, you could do a four inch, but you're going to be right there. All right. Uh, do you make aluminum high steer arms for Kingpin 60s? And what convinces the CJ7 purist 
that cutting my Jeep is an LS motor is an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're that um, tied, that dedicated, that pure to your CJ, then get something else to start building and keep that just the way it is, mm -hmm. right? But we, Jeff and I know many people with CJs that did the Legend suspension and they're badass like they are awesome. that one guy you've got back there in missouri that did a really nice that just finished it before i got there oh scrambler <laughs> oh sweet. yeah yeah sweet Dead. and keith's is really nice too and his yeah. is on our in our gallery section on the website you can go check it out it's red yeah. check that out we call it the retro rocker if you know keith it fits jeff this is probably a good one for you how do i get more horsepower out of my 2005 tj without tearing my motor apart <laughs> Without tearing it apart? Oh, yeah. We well, don't tear it apart, you just take it out. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bolt here and a bolt there, and some on the trans, and a whole root comes out. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Jeff's is laying in the back of his truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Makes it ride nicer. <laughs> sure is. <laughs> I don't know what to do with the dang thing. Uh, well, the head's worth money. Kind of. Yeah, for any guy with a 4.2 wanting to do a stroker, they need that uh, 4.0 right. head. Well, then there you go. Tell that guy to buy my head, stroke it out, and he's good to go. <laughs> I think I have a partially done stroker. He, if, you, if you want a stroker, call Jeff, and we can make some kind of deal. All right. Sure, this has been asked before, but LJ or JKU? I have a JKU now, but starting, but have to start over leaning towards a Tracer LJ. Uh, man. So it's hard to beat like on the Terramoto, that wheelbase, that 118 inch wheelbase is, I, I'm, I, I'm hesitant to say that I would be willing to part with that, okay? I've gone up back door, like yeah. that, that Jeep has done a lot of stuff. Um, but it is four inches wider, right? That's, that's like a mile. You get into Lion's Den, that's a mile. Yeah, see, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> Lion's Den was where my head went while I would build an LJ. Right. Um, just a lot. It depends where you live. Out yeah. here, the JKs, JKU is perfect. Fits everywhere. But back in Missouri, more out east, you get in really tight trails between trees and stuff, and the the less body, in some cases, the better. Yeah. Like you've seen my Jeep, it's beat to hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all from wheeling yeah. out there. Yeah. And, you know, people, the, the bigger these Jeeps get, you know, if you're running a 40 inch tire, you've got to be like 108, 110, 112 inch wheelbase, or you're going to be like crazy tippy. Or 107. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I look, Terramoto's still my all time favorite. So, and I've gotten to drive plenty of Tracer builds. So I, uh, all I'm saying is I'm not sure I'd ditch it and go back. Right. I, what I can say is, if I build another one, it's going to be an LJ, right? So then I got one of each, but not everybody can afford one of each. Sure, your next one, so it can be a JL. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's coming next, and then it would be the next one after that. <laughs> All right. Good point. Mark Lawrence, I already have a Curry Daniel 44 low pinion. Can I use this with the tracer kit on an 04 LJ? Mm. Nope. Now, if you're moving to a tracer kit, it's, it's like walking out to the edge of the high dive. You're not just dumping off a diving board, you're dumping off the high dive, okay? You're, you're all in. If you wanna use that, you can, but you're buying the Legend kit, yep. right? So um, just, and, and look, Jeff and the other guys are happy to talk to you about the differences and, and why that works, okay? so. Um, just the legend kit is a builder's kit, so you you get to move everything, do everything. You do. It, g it gives you all the tools to succeed with your That's suspension, right. and the tracer has everything laid out to you for very specific reason, for with very specific parts. Yeah, yeah. And and the clearance between everything is, and if you change anything, you're gonna get a collision. Yep. So. Uh, Chris Colwell, 2018 JKU Genride Elite Suspension, swapping into an LS3 one inch body lift or wrap exhaust to protect from heat through floorboard. I prefer not to lift, but installer says to lift it. No, no do no, not no. put a body lift in there. No, you you absolutely want to heat wrap. Like I do um, ceramic coat the exhaust and heat wrap. And if I have to, I'll double heat wrap and then I'll 
uh, put that DEI stuff right here. Man, we just got everything right here. We do. Look at this. It's almost so, like we've been working on Jeeps over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you haven't seen this stuff, it's really cool. Yeah. Jeff's using it. Jamie's using it. I'm using it. Uh, Kelly's using it. You just peel this off, and the I don't know what's on the back of this, but it is. You get it on anything, and it's on. Yeah. The design engineering stuff is impressive. It's really I good. I was able to get my, there's been so much muck underneath my Jeep, my transmission tunnel over the years, and this just stuck right yeah, on. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, I cleaned it the best I could. But. Yeah. And we what we did was the piece we got is way bigger than this, right? Yeah. It's like 42 by 48. And we just wrapped the tunnel. We wrapped everything in this stuff. And um, this has got a... It's, it's not like insulation, it's like silica. Mm -hmm. And um, it really, so you get the reflective properties of this and then the, the basically insulation of yeah. this white silica stuff and you don't get any heat. But you still do want to heat wrap your exhaust. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah you, yep. you got to do it all. Don't, don't do one, do it all. Yep. Especially like LS3, you know, when you're talking about a lot of horsepower, um, just get it done once. Cause like you just said, you want to go back. Now the crap's all dirty. You know, just you, do it while you're there, right? Right, Jamie? Do it while you're there. When all the stuff's out and it's easy. Uh, yes. Yes. It's a pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah. And if you do go back, you're going to be cussing at yourself the whole time that uh -huh. you didn't do it in the first yeah. place. And I know Richard Garrett just did it. Like, all, all <laughs> yeah. of us did it. So uh, we sell that DEI stuff on our website. Just type in DEI into the search box. Yeah. It's, it's you awesome can see stuff. it all. Heat wrap, that stuff, everything. Everything you need. It's all the same stuff we use. Uh, has Andrew named his Jeep yet? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, uh, he has not. Did you do Christmas hat when we started? No. Yeah, no. where have you been, dude? I was here when we started. I don't yeah. Well, where. then did he have the Christmas hat? Well, is, is the Christmas hat over there? No. So. Oh, I think you just put it on. <laughs> I, had to, I had to take a field trip. <laughs> I see there. that. Jesse McDonald, curious what the average price to do an LS swap and a TJ is. Uh, I'm going to say, well, okay, so first off, it depends. If, if you buy a good used LS out of a junkyard, it's going to be 20000 Okay? If you buy a brand new, something high performance, you're just tagging money yeah. on that. Am, am I about right? You're about right. And then it just depends on how you want to do how it. How crazy. Like everything, I came to like a, a, an option every day or every right. hour some days. Well, like the I'm Atlas. Like, You're like, oh, do I just yeah. get the regular one or, or do just I like spend a little more? Or right. push on or hoses. I'm like, yeah. uh, regular style or race style. And then you just keep going race style. And yeah. next thing you know. But, but then, I would then say it's 20, done forever. You're and done. that's what I keep telling yes. myself. Yes. It's, it's like the axles. Like, yes. Yep. Do you build a 44 or do you just go to a 60? Yeah. 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 So. Cry once. Yeah. So do you, you figure like 20 in or more? I think I'm a little more. More? Yeah. Because you, you did the rear radiator. You know, you rewire the whole thing. Rewire right? the whole thing. So most people don't go that crazy. You know, they'll yeah. do the Novak conversion, which comes with a little box that just converts everything so the yeah. gauges work. So, so. Um, yeah. But by the time you're done with the radiator, the exhaust, the motor, the tranny, the transfer case, yeah. you know, yeah. you're, you're in. So Got another question just came in. Okay. Do you sell a steering, steering setup to make a JK 44 work in a TJ? Yeah. Yeah. One of our, there's a few variables there. Yeah. Right. But our, if you, if they get our five eights kit with the Terraflex knuckle, uh, with the Terraflex knuckle that can work. Yep. Yeah. So just call in, talk to one of the guys, talk to Jeff. You, you see him. Look at his face. Call him. <laughs> <laughs> Keith just, success, uh, just suggested gold member for uh, Anderson. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Well, isn't that, isn't that so. Lee's? <laughs> I, or is Lee's Goldfinger? Uh, I, I don't know. know. I always call it Goldfinger, but I think it's really gold member. What's Goldfinger? The uh, Lee's Cherokee. I think it's gold member. Uh, is it? Yeah, so it's already, one of our guys already has that. Not only is it taken, it's taken one by one of our guys. Yeah. That would be cool, though. <laughs> That's all cut up? Really? What? All right, you're, well. Uh, you're at 55 minutes, so. Okay, so we will, because we started late, I will give five more minutes for questions. 
but then we are going to wrap it up. And by the way, somebody was asking if we're going to install this. It, it's literally eight bolts, right? Yeah. The, to put this fender on. Now, you know, inner fender, a little more bolts, but yeah. not bad. Um, so not hard at all. Um, are these the bolts right here? We, uh, we could, yeah. We could even demonstrate by putting a couple bolts in. Okay. And we're going to do it the Tony Pellegrino way where I said to put Whoa. some grease on the threads because we don't want to be a homer. Uh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm just glad it's grease, not anti -seed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Cranfield would like to know if you got your exhaust on. Yeah, baby. It's on. <laughs> it's on, huh? Sounds good, too. Check my Instagram story. <laughs> All right, I'll get the back, you get the front. Who was asking about, are we installing this? Uh, I'd have to go way back. Oh, they're, they're not uh, still. I think you gotta drop down. Just oh, that's right. Forgot about that guy up there. That's Ryan not. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, why did you do a little 5.3? Is that gonna keep up with Terramoto? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about weight to power ratio. <laughs> Um, I gotta come back more. Will it come back? Oh, um, uh, maybe it's the whole cow. I'm not. <laughs> it's close. Well, now I can't get mine out. Oh, oh, probably because I'm pulling on it. Here, hmm. I'll stop pulling on it. Keep those questions coming while we're doing this, guys. Are we sure this is for a TJ? Oh, I don't think this is for a TJ. Somebody just handed it to us? Yeah, because this, this oh. I think this is a CJ. Oh, <laughs> okay. Then we're not going to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll put that back. Somebody faked us out and gave us a CJ Fender. Yeah. What's the part number on that box? Uh, which box? I don't even know what box I, this came out of. Did it come with a box? Andrew says the YJ Fender. No, it's a TJ. It says TFF 2710. Huh. TJ LJ 4-inch Fender. Sure don't seem like it. Uh. Because if they are YJ ones, I'll take them. <laughs> Standards? No. No, you, you need need a little high line. You need highs. Growler's getting the full update. This might be a growler update. And if you guys missed our last live about uh, fuel injection, fuel pumps, all that. You need to go back and watch it. Uh, that's a tremendous education right there. So uh, go back and look at that in detail because yep. even like with what Jeff did, just updating the fuel pump is a huge upgrade to oh, yeah. any Jeep, whether it's a six cylinder or a V8. So. Yep. No, no, because no, I, I, this is not, normally it wraps up around this and that clearly doesn't. Yeah, yeah. so. Yep. What else we got? Any other questions? Are we are we really good? On the aluminum, can you run it all raw? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, that's the way both Jeff and I prefer. Yeah. Um, I've been running my fenders and armors all aluminum all raw for five five six years now. Yeah. Which and I like because when you tune it, all you have to do is that Scotch Bright. Yep. I, I put WD forty on it and then just rub it like this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go back and forth, clean it off, and it looks like brand new. Like brand new. Yeah. yeah. Go with the grain. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can do it. Which is how they're all bent, so yeah. it's easy. To... <laughs> so, I mean, if you've never seen one of these up close, they're all hand TIG welded. Looks looks like a machine. And they're pretty. It. They're beautiful. If you know anything about welding, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, and these all come with the perforated panels to let heat out of the yep. engine compartment. So. Because what did I say earlier? Heat in the engine compartment is not your friend. Get not your good. battery, get everything out of there. Way better. So, what else we got? Uh, is it, it seems the four inch flares are more popular than zero. Any functional reason for that? Uh, just because, you know, it helps with the spray a little bit. Um, when I first built the Growler, um, I did zeros and um, they're, they're I really like the zeros. That's what Richard Garrett's running. I still like him too, but that, that little flare helps way it, more it, than you it think. It does. It helps more than you think. Yeah. Um, 
You know, if you ever get in the sand or the mud and you get on the gas, especially if you have a V8, mm -hmm. it, it sprays crap everywhere. So if you're turning, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, just having a little bit of a flare, that's why the four inch is the most popular for yeah. sure. And a lot of states, if people are daily driving, it keeps you legal. Yeah, that and, you know, your, your tires aren't exactly underneath this anymore. No. They're, they're way out. Like even this tire, you know, if we put this on, it's going to be like that much tire yeah. sticking out. So, yeah. So, yep. I mean, six inches just look way too wide to me. I know there's really certain funny. states, Utah, Pennsylvania, uh, yeah. you know, they're, they're sticklers about that, but. Someone said that they can't believe the welds are by hand. By hand. Oh, yeah. Yes, on all of our, on all of our aluminum products. Mm -hmm. Yes. John Miller. Yep. Thanks, John. Yep, they're, they're nice. Our guys take a lot of pride in that. Length of the button head bolts for the JK rear fenders. Length, uh, they're three quarters inch. Um, I might even have some sitting right here because I was just working on mine. Mm -hmm. Maybe over here. But yeah, three quarter inch button head. And you can use a regular bolt too. So whether it's a, a regular or a button head, um, either one. Wait, I don't know. You mentioned, um, quarter 20s? These are quarter 20s. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, and, and some people like these because you can get a wrench on them in there where the Allen head's a little harder to get in there. I like them. I feel like the, you can snug these up a little. A little more, head. yeah. And the, I mean, these are stainless. That's why people like them. So, yeah. Well, yeah. And they look so clean. And they're clean. Yeah. So, but three quarter inch. Yeah. Got anything else? Three or four inch lift on high lines with 37s on an LJ. It'll look like a monster truck. Two? Two inch? <laughs> yeah. I actually, Andrew ran yeah. no lift. Yeah. No lift with oh, high fenders on 37s. Yeah. So, um, yeah, go. If you're not familiar, get over to the gallery section on our website. Look at the khaki colored LJ that's in there right now, and uh, you'll see that with the Highline fenders. Um, yep. So, unless you want a monster truck, I wouldn't do that. That's all we got right now. Okay. Well, we have, we have hit the time. Thank you all for joining us. Um, we will be back next Tuesday from the Hammers, and um, I'm, I'm out there, and uh, I'm going to be doing a whole thing about why we're out there, what we're doing out there, and uh, giving you an update from there. So uh, please watch. I'm going I'm to have all kinds of information, the kind of stuff you guys like, and then uh, Thursday, we'll be back here in the studio. You gonna do one on Christmas Eve? I'm gonna do one on Christmas oh, Eve. Why cool. not, right? I'll watch so, from St. Louis. There you go. Yeah, and I'll be wearing the hat again. So, <laughs> yep. So um, we've got at least a couple more coming to you um, in the near future next week. So, thanks everybody for watching, and we will see you then.